So, um, hello, everybody. Um, I think we start in time. Um, oh, I don't think we start in time. So this is going to be about uh, programming PDF using web technologies uh, on a command line. I've just given a, a brief introduction into a product that we have programmed in that area. Um, and this is about what, what we think is important. Um, if, you, if you think about using web technologies for creating print files, uh, specifically PDF. I will be doing this session together with David from 4Ps. 4Ps is our international distributor. Um, it is so that I will be giving a few slides to you, um, some background, PDF chip and so forth, and David will do a practical demonstration that I hope will, will explain even better what, what PDF chip is about. In any case, do me the favor, if anything is unclear or you have questions, just, just uh, let me know, just ask. We are not that many people, so, so that, that will work. So anyway, I, I want to start with um, uh, what, what we see. In, so we, in Color Software, as I've said, we have a product that is used in, in, in print and publishing, pre-press for, for PDF creation. And um, uh, we, we, we received inquiry f inquiries from that area about creating PDF, meaning good PDF that, that can be used in, in the print production process for, for pre-press also. Um, and when we looked at the market, we, we've recognized that the print, the whole print market is changing. And we, we see some a few trends uh, in that area. And I want to, to start with, with trends that we can see in, in print and, and PDF, uh, in the print and PDF area. So one trend that we see is, is multi-channel. So usually people don't just, or in, in many cases, you just still need to cre uh, create a, a PDF for, for the printing pr process. But in many cases, it's, not, it's just not the print process anymore. It's also uh, uh, web publishing. So you some areas this is called multi-channel, so you, 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 you maintain several channel, ch uh, channels uh, which you're using in communication with uh, your customers. In other areas, it, uh, then the name for that is web first or mobile first and, and, and print and, and, and publishing mainly, uh, and that just means um, uh, every content is, is first um, published. Uh, in the web, and only after that it, it's thought about oh, about the print process. That for newspapers or so, these these are talking about web first or web first. And if it's about printing, then in many cases QR codes are being used in order to make it possible to then, if you have a printed sheet of paper, in order to make it possible to get back from that printed sheet of paper into the digital world. So these are important trends that we see. Another trend is digital print, um, digital printing uh, machines, specifically inkjet in, uh, machines, are taking away from, from what has been printed on commercial presses up until now. So it's taking it away, but it's also entering into new markets. For instance, tiles for, for your bathrooms or so, uh, which hasn't, haven't been printed before and today are, are just being printed products. So. And, and inkjet is, is used for, for in, 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 in all of these cases. So these are important trends. Another trend is variable data printing. So it's not just you, you, you create one, one sheet and then you print it in a, in a high circulation. Uh, it's variable. So each pr uh, uh, printed sheet is different from each other. That, of course, applies to, to invoices, for instance, but also communications with customers uh, takes place in indi individual ways where you have at least the name of the customer on a printed sheet. So, and that variable data gets into the into the printing process. And in addition to that, um, 
all that becomes colorful. So what, where, where an invoice was printed just black and white in former times, today it's usually color. And another trend that we see is individualization. So that goes beyond just, just invoices. So you have several products that, that did not exist, exist a couple of years ago. Um, for instance, uh, personalized labels for, for uh, I think it's a beer bottle over there, or a cake that can be printed, a puzzle, uh, or that, that thing that, that takes some, some plants into it. So you have individual products. You can order that on the internet. You just upload uh, uh, what you want to, to be printed, and then you receive the stuff back. So these are trends that we can see. and and uh, and. Uh, on this background, we thought about, OK, how should uh, an engine look like? What technologies should we use in, an, in a product uh, that is uh, designed to create PDF files that work in these, in, in this, in these environments? And one, one thought, of course, which makes sense in a multi-channel environment is um, be as compatible as possible with the web technology. So, just um, uh, uh, make, make an engine that works together well with uh, web technologies uh, or, or publishing technologies that are being used in the internet like HTML and co. And then individualization requires uh, variable data to be dynamically merged with, with static templates if you want. So I have an invoice where, where I have the company logo at the top of the sheet. And then I have all the variable data that comes from a database or something, and I, ne I, ne I need to merge it. So I, I need an engine that is allows me to, do, to just do that. An engine that allows me to, to integrate with a database or, or whatever other uh, data repositories I might have. Um, and then for circulation one, so if each and every printed sheet of paper is just different from, from another, then of course I need a, a highly performant engine that allows me to, mer to do the, 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 um, the merging of the two pieces, meaning the, the template and the, the dynamically data, highly uh, uh, fast. Because the, the, the printing machines are getting faster, faster, faster every day. And then it, it's natural, you think about web technology. So why not just use the same stuff that is being used in the internet for, for publishing? Why not just use that for, for PDF cre creation as well? And thereby you, you already have a couple of advantages. So you have the separation of content uh, from layout that is one of the main principles and has ever been in, in, in the internet. Um, you, you have template-based uh, page creation, and you have the JavaScript stuff that allows you to, to modify uh, each and every uh, printed sheet or PDF page, if you want. So you, you, you gain lots of advantages if you use this web technologies. Uh, in addition, web, web publishing, so a browser is very, f very, very fast, so it translates very fast uh, what, what he receives from, from the web server into uh, some painting on your screen. So you have highly performant and, and very mature technology. And in addition, when it comes to PDF, you have one, one part of the HTML stack, which is HTML, CSS, JavaScript. There is also SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, and that is quite close to, to the internal graphic model of PDF. It also has been invented by Adobe. So that is just another advantage that you have if you use web technologies, uh, that you have something that is quite similar to, to um, what PDF uses internally. OK? SVG is, is uh, no, it's, 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 of course, it, it also uses these, these uh, 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 parentheses, the, the, the triangle parentheses, but it's not, X, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, a, like HTML in a way, it's XML based. But it's, it's, it's more um, where, where it's difficult in HTML to, I don't know, uh, define complex vector graphics or so. Yeah. That is what, what SVG is being but made I'm for. I'd like to use it. I'm, I'm thinking 
by tomorrow when we get into this PDF 2.0 thing, I'm going to ask whoever, Adobe, if 2.0 will support something like SVG where you can have PDF as an inline graph on a web page. You know what I mean? So maybe they'll just say, well, just use SVG. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I'm not sure whether you can use SVG in order to just to have a PDF as part of a website. But SVG is is of course you have um, in, in inside of PDF you have a graphic model, and um, you ha you can of course have in a PDF file uh, vector graphics and everything. Yeah, yeah. That you cannot, or it's, it's very difficult to have that in the internet on an HTML page. And you can use SVG for that. So, and, and every browser as of today supports SVG. So if you have, you can incorporate SVG into HTML. And if you, use, if you would do that, so your browser will definitely uh, just display that. And that, of course, is an advantage when, when you want to, to convert an HTML page into PDF. And you, you want to have, I don't know, vector graphics or so that's not being rasterized. And SVG is just perfect for that. Right. So SVG is not for anything multi page, is it? It's just for one graphic, is it not? Oh, yeah. That's why I was thinking of PDF. My company has a lot of multi page, you know, 100 okay. page PDFs. It'd be nice to have just that first page show there and they click on it and they can. <coughs> But it's nice vector graphics. Yeah, SVG is more for vector graphics. And, and in a browser context, of course, you don't have the concept of a page that much. Right. So usually you would, it would just make the <coughs> what, whatever that is, maybe it's a page or whatever that the browser displays, it would just get bit bigger then. And of course, you can have a link that links you to, to a different page if you want. But that, that is a different concept of a page uh, as, as a page uh, is used in, in a PDF context. So in, in addition to that, so even if web, web technologies, HTML, SVG, CSS, JavaScript is already uh, powerful, but if you're not, not satisfied, for instance, hyphenation, which is uh, important for German language because German tends to use very long words and then you want to have hyphenation. Uh, and of course you need to, to you want to have an hyphenation engine that that uh, is able to recognize a German word and, and, and do a proper hyphenation on it. So there are such, there is stuff around that you can simply incorporate into your uh, uh, technology. There is hyphenator JS, which is just a JavaScript library that for instance allows you to, to um, use, to let the engine automatically hyphenate your texts. And there are other engines around that you can just use in your uh, web publishing <coughs> environment. So it's, it's extensible and there's many stuff around that usually comes for free. So uh, it, it, it seems to be a good idea. Web publishing is uh, powerful, it, it has everything, it's mature, you, you will find people around that are able to, to, to use it. So it's, it seems to be a good idea to look into that as, as, means, of, as a means of, of do a page description. And then if you look into a browser, so what a browser internally uses, this is just the basic flow that all uh, browsers around uh, are using. Um, there is HTML, <coughs> JavaScript, SVG. S this is kind of a simplified flow, but, but that, that is how it's being done. Then everything is translated into the DOM, which is a do uh, document object model. And then the, the, the layout is entered, meaning the, the coordinates of stuff and everything. And then that is translated into a render tree. And then everything is being painted in, in your browser, in your Chrome, Safari, Firefox, or whatever browser you are using. Um, and then, of course, what we thought about, OK, how, how can we make this work together with our PDF engine? And then we simply changed the whole thing a little bit. We, we just use, this, use the same render tree that is being created by, by WebKit in this case. So we've decided to use the browser engine from Safari. And we're just translating the render tree that, that uh, the, the WebKit generates into a PDF file. And we've just connected that with our PDF engine that we already had. So 
if, if we think, okay, web publishing seems to be a good thing to use for PDF publishing, uh, on the other hand, there, there are a few things missing in, 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 uh, um, in web publishing. So I've said that there, there does not exist uh, the concept of a page, but um, still it's possible with, with creative style sheets, sheets with uh, CSS to define page breaks. It's not a problem to use arbitrary fonts. Um, a browser would usually just display something, so it wouldn't uh, uh, give you an error message if a font cannot be found. But if you make sure that the font is available, it will happily use that, that, that font that you have uh, told him to use. But there is uh, a couple of other stuff that you want to have for, for PDF creation, like page numbers. And that you don't have, of course, in a browser. Browser wouldn't tell you this is page number one or that is page number two. You have all the print color spaces like uh, CMYK for printing. You have uh, spot colors for printing or I even ICC-based colors, device-independent colors. So there is a couple of stuff that is missing in a browser engine. There are a few more features that are not a must, maybe, but they are highly desirable like the ability to create or uh, archive PDF, PDFA files or uh, PDFX files for printing. You wanna, maybe you want to add metadata. You can add metadata to an HTML page, so that, that in itself is possible, but it's not possible to, uh, uh, com to make that compliant with uh, the internal metadata from PDF, which is XMP, because that requires namespaces and so forth. So you, you would want to extend that. Um, and another uh, feature would be support of page geometry boxes, like a trim box and a bleed box and everything. So that, that is um, important for the print process. And then there is a, a couple of more stuff that you might want to have. So it's, it's more nice to have features like the ability to place PDF files onto the final PDF so that it's not being rasterized but just being placed as a PDF file. QR codes, I've mentioned that, that we see that this is important when it's about printing. So it, it might be good to be able to place barcodes or QR codes. Um, to do advanced pagination, meaning running headers, where each page tells you which chapter um, you are currently seeing, or even create, be able to create a table of table of contents, where, um, it, it, where it shows you on which page which chapter starts, um, and uh, the the support of MathML for um, uh, the ability to, to set formulas. MathML is just another language, if you want, that, you, that is part of the HTML stack. So what you want is uh, support for MathML, if you want, for PDF creation. So that was a quick overview about what we think is important when it's about using web technologies for print or PDF creation. And now I'm handing over to David for a more practical demonstration how they that might be might take place in real life. Good morning. Or afternoon, whatever it is. Who of you is familiar with HTML and CSS, you would say, or JavaScript and stuff? That's uh, really good, because otherwise this would have been really painful. Um, I'm joking. So what Kalos has done is create a product that is called PDF Chip. And the good thing is, well, if you're a developer anyway, that there is no user interface whatsoever. It's a command line tool. So you always have to integrate it into some way in a, another solution. And to show you what it can do, well, I have a very simple website here. There is a, some CSS behind it. It's, I'm not a designer, so don't, it, it's not the most beautiful thing you could ever imagine. But what I can do now is I can take that HTML and I can basically, with PDF chip, convert that into a PDF document. How do you do that? Well, uh, there is the PDF chip tool itself, and you feed it in an, an, an HTML file. 
called index.html in this case, and out comes a PDF file, and I can specify where all of that stuff is put. And as you can see, there is no fancy UI, but what comes out is a PDF. And if I look at that PDF, it looks exactly the same as the HTML, which is a promising start for a tool like this. It's also a little bit limited because what I've done now is I've taken an HTML file and RGB colors and I believe those are JPEG images and I've converted that into PDF, but I still have a PDF that has RGB and a rasterized image in there and so on. So it's nice that you can do that conversion. At the same time, you probably want a little bit more than, uh, than that. So let's do a little bit more actually. Uh, let me go to next example and I'm just going to run the same command as I did before in this new folder and if I go look at that what I end up in here is something that looks slightly different. Now the reason it looks different is on the one hand because I've changed the CSS around but on the other hand, I now get a PDF file that is two pages instead of one. You might notice that the page size is uh, different. Even Preview does that correctly. Um, but when I open that in something decent, like PDF Toolbox, then it will show me that, and it's kind of small on screen, but it will show me that I have created a PDF document that now contains an output intent. If you're in print, you, un you know that a PDFX file needs to contain an ICC profile to define what color is used. Well, that is in there. There is a PDFX1A tag in there. In fact, this is a correct PDFX file. And if I go to uh, examine it a little bit more, you'll see that it even uses spot color in here in a very correct way. This is not something, all of these things is, are not things that you're able to do with a normal HTML file. And all of these features that are put in this PDF are there because PDF chip allows you to do a number of things during the conversion. Now, it doesn't do that by modifying, um, by having some heuristics inside or some secret magic. Uh, instead, what it does is it allows you to modify the HTML that you're using and the CSS that you're using. So there are extensions to, the, to HTML and CSS that you can use. And those extensions are recognized by PDF chip and are converted into a proper PDF file. If I have this meta property here that says PDFX and I specify PDFX 1A, then PDF chip knows to put the correct metadata in the PDF to create a PDFX1A file. Same with the output intent. Um, this link definition that I have in the HTML tells PDF chip to pick up the output intent from the template that I have, the template PDF, and put it in the resulting PDF file that it just created. So the idea is not, and this is very important, the idea is not to simply take the same HTML and CSS that you have on a web page and convert that into a good PDF. The idea really is to create a template using customized HTML and CSS and use that. Now, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean, let me complete this example and I'll come right back to you. It doesn't mean that the HTML you see here is not usable in a browser. If I open this, it gives me something that looks reasonably close to what I just saw in, uh, in PDF. So all of the things that, you, that we do here are still understood by the browser as well. Sometimes by using some techniques to make sure that both are understood. And let me highlight how I get this nice spot color in there, for example. In fact, in my CSS file, I have two color definitions. I have one that sets up the color using an RGB color, and this is what the browser understands. So if I open this in the browser, that's what is going to be shown in the browser itself. If I run this file with PDF chip, then PDF chip also understands this C chip CNYK specification. And that one actually now creates a spot color with the CNYK alternate in there. 
right? For a browser, this line is totally new. It doesn't understand this. And the standard says that if it doesn't understand a line like this in CSS, it should just ignore it. So for a browser, this line is in fact not here, and it will show you the RGB, not the uh, spot color definition. So I've modified the HTML, and I've modified the CSS, and I've created something that will work both in the browser and in um, a PDF file. And not only does that work for colors and metadata tags and standard tags and so on, but what is also happening here is, and I need to reopen the HTML to show you that, what I've also done is instead of using a JPEG image, where is Sublime? There. Instead of a JPEG image here at the bottom, I actually used an image with a PDF source file in there. And what PDF chip does is, in a very good way, high quality way, take whatever content I have in this PDF file and insert it into the final PDF that it generates. It's not rasterized, it doesn't convert it in any way, it simply takes the content of that PDF, the logo in this case, and inserts it into the final result. So if you have high quality PDFs for logos or images or graphics that you want to have in that final PDF, PDF chip makes that really, really simple to do. Questions? Uh, yeah, so this fascinates me because I just spent the last month helping some colleagues do business cards. Mm -hmm. company, right? Yep. And I used InDesign, um, and their boss said, I want this fully automated at some point. Mm -hmm. and, and I set up a nice template for them in InDesign with 10 marks and But this is pretty cool because could you not effectively have a business card on the screen in a web browser that a customer, meaning a person who wants a business card done, they could fill in yes. information on that's the web and then PDF chip could make the card. Yeah, that's exactly what and you can so do. Awesome. You, have, so you have two ways of doing it or you have a template, you have a form on the website, someone fills out the data and then uh, out comes um, a PDF file created by PDF chip in the background. That's a very useful thing to do. Or if you want to, to go high volume, and I've gone into the fourth example because it aligns exactly with what you're saying. This one actually takes a few seconds to generate. And if I go to the PDF file that is generated, you'll understand why because this does exactly the same thing, but it does it in high volume. So in this case, I have a data source uh, where I have a thousand records uh, with information uh, about people. Uh, this is not a breach of confidentiality. This is demo data, so don't worry about the names or the email addresses. Uh, but this is just data that normally could come from a database or whatever other data source you have. And because in PDF chip, I can not only um, control, I, I have extensions for HTML and CSS, I also have extensions for JavaScript. And in this case, that JavaScript was used to modify that template that I have. The template is still only for one business card. But with the JavaScript, I can pull data out of my data source and create as many different um, business cards as I want. Now, I've created them all in one file in this example. There is something that I, could, that I could also do in JavaScript to create individual PDF files for each of these business cards that I'm generating. So it all depends on what you, uh, what you need in there. Where is the design? The design is simply HTML and CSS. Whatever you get here, you set up with HTML and CSS. So if I change the CSS here, to uh, recolor the barcode into something that is a red spot color, then I'm going to get a red spot color on the business card. So all of that can be controlled from the, uh, from the website itself. Yes, you can add those as well. You can put the correct crop box in here, you can add the, the bleed box and the media box, and you could, for example, use SVG to put those marks in that you want. Or I could pull in a PDF file into my template that is just the marks and that I place where I need them. So all of that is, uh, is supported. 
Now, this little feature that you see in here is actually also one of the cool things in PDF chip. Uh, PDF chip has on board a, a barcode library, if you want, and that allows it to generate just about any barcode type uh, known to mankind. Um, I'm not sure that's true, but it's about 120 different barcode types, so it's, it's substantial. And the way this works is exactly the same as with anything else. Um, I have in my HTML for this example, at the bottom here, I added an object that has an ID of barcode, but the most important thing here is this application barcode. And when PDF chip encounters that, is it knows to convert that into a high quality barcode in the resulting PDF. And in this case, I'm telling it to create a QR code and I'm giving it the data that needs to be encoded in the QR code as well. So if I have a data source where all of this information comes from, like this one here, then I can embed the information uh, from that data source into the barcode. And actually, each of these barcodes that you have here on, on, on screen is, a, uh, is customized, is a separate uh, piece of... Um, so a unique piece, if you want. So it's PDF chip extending the barcode? Yep, correct. Okay. So it, it has the intelligence to do that? It has the intelligence to put in there whatever it needs to uh, put in there. And whether it's a QR code or a data matrix or uh, an EAN or an ISBN code, doesn't matter. It's all supported by the, uh, the barcode library. The only thing you need to do is tell it the correct type and give it data that is appropriate for that type. The answer is yes. <laughs> so in, in this case, just to add to that, so what, what is, we use, we use the HTML for the layout, yeah. to lay up all the stuff, and you use JavaScript in order to make it dynamic, so to exchange the names and the, the value for the barcodes and everything. So you get the value of the layout. You get the value of the layout, yeah. and then, then you create, yeah. and yeah, of course, you need a little bit of HTML. Yeah. Now, I don't have that much time to go to show you all kinds of different details, but I do want to show you that this is not limited to single page documents or small things like barcode or like um, business cards and stuff like that. So let me show you something else. Uh, this is a build script. And the reason it's a build script is because it does uh, something slightly more complicated than a single command line, as you'll see. Um, we believe very much in using your own tools. So what I have here is, and I'll open this up in Acrobat, what I have here is I've just generated the documentation for PDF chip. So for the product, we wrote the documentation itself in HTML, add some CSS that makes it pretty, and then PDF chip takes all of those HTML files and converts that into a proper PDF document. So this is multi-page stuff uh, that, is, uh, that is generated. How does it do that? In exactly the same way as what you've seen before. So if I open up this build script to show you what is inside, you'll see that the only thing it really does is feed all of the different HTML files into PDF chip. So a whole array of, array of, PD of HTML files. It tells PDF chip what the output PDF should be, where all of that is generated in, and then it runs that. And uh, all of those HTMLs are converted into a PDF document. Now, it does some other cool stuff. And Dietrich already mentioned that there are troubles on, on, on when you think about web technology with things like pagination and page numbers and running headers and all of those kinds of things. Well. Uh, what is supported by PDF chip is a system where you have an overlay and an underlay HTML. And that basically says to PDF chip that it should first convert all of your main HTML files. And when it's done, it will take these overlay and underlay templates, convert those to PDF and add them on top of your document and at the back of your document. And for things like page numbers, for example, that's ideal because after the first run through your main HTML, PDF chip knows which page we're talking about. And in your overlay, you can then put in the right page number. Or you could put in the right 
um, running header somewhere in uh, in that document. How about the typography HTML? Well? Oh, HTML does pretty good. Actually, WebKit does amazingly good typography in in general. Um, so most things it does pretty well. Uh, open type fonts are supported, for example, with uh, all kinds of nifty features. There are a number of things that aren't as good. And an example is hyphenation. Hyphenation in English is reasonably okay, but when you start thinking about exotic languages such as German and Dutch, for example, um, then it becomes more difficult. But because you have a WebKit engine at the back of this and because every type of JavaScript that you can think of is supported. It's very easy to plug in a library such as Hyphenator that does do good hyphenation and use that. And the result you'll get in your PDF file will use that good hyphenation out of Hyphenator. The other thing, and I won't go into detail about it, but there is a, a command line um, instruction here that is called tags and this actually instructs PDF chip to create accessibility tags in the resulting PDF file. Um, support for uh, PDF UA and accessibility in PDF chip is not 100% yet but if you look at this document that I just created it will contain uh, all of the tags put in there automatically so if your HTML is correct if you have alternate tags for images in there and so on, if you have a good source, PDF chip will convert that into a PDF file and put all of the accessibility tags in there as well, which is actually pretty cool by itself. Just one more example, because I cheated in this one. And you probably haven't noticed, which means I did it well. But there is one thing that used to be very difficult, and that is this file, the index file, or the, the table of content file. Um, creating table of contents in HTML is kind of difficult because while, while you're writing the HTML, you have no idea which page you're working on. Pagination is done by WebKit and that is only done when you convert it into a PDF document. So you have no pages. So how do you create a table of contents that has page numbers in it, for example? Well, in the original documentation that we shipped with PDF chip, we made it by hand, which is a lot of fun. And I know because I did it. However, in the version of PDF chip that uh, is, uh, is coming up, let me take a uh, new build script in here and we'll do that. You have a new feature and when I show this, it should be wrong if I cleaned out everything correctly. So I have this documentation again and I have a page for a table of contents and as you can see, that that page is empty. Right. It's a nice feature, but maybe not very useful. So let me run that build script again. And we'll look at that PDF file again. And now, in a very magic way, I have a good table of contents and it actually contains the correct page numbers. And I could link these to the correct pages and so on as well if I wanted to. Now the reason for this is that uh, the upcoming version of PDF chip supports something that is called data collectors. That's a difficult word to say that while you're doing a conversion, you can ask PDF chip to write into a JSON file, write information about particular types of, of, of tags that you want to see. So if, all of, if I want to have all of my heading one level text um, in a table of content, as I'm doing here, I can mark that in a specific way. PDF chip will write that into a JSON file, and the second time I do the conversion, my JavaScript actually uses that JSON file to input a correct table of content for me. And I could do the same with things like footnotes, tables of, of figures or images, um, any type of overview that you want to create. The downside is that you have to run the conversion twice, or in fact, in, for complex documents, you have to run the conversion until your tables are stable. This is exactly the same type of um, functionality that you have in something like LaTeX that is used in, in 
uh, more academic um, uh, documentation and so on. It's, it's the same principle. It takes a little bit of time to set up in the HTML and the JavaScript that you have, but if you look at these examples, and I will be more than happy to share them if you're interested, but if you look at these examples, you'll see that it's actually quite simple. It's a matter of tagging that content correctly in, in CSS and having a little bit of JavaScript to put the information in the location that you want, and the rest is done by PDF chip in the background. Okay, so just a few small examples of uh, what you can do with um, with PDF chip to convert a um, an HTML and a CSS. And I repeat that an HTML and CSS that has been modified specifically for PDF chip into a good PDF file, which could be a PDFX file or a PDFA file, contain things like CNYK color and spot color, uh, could be tagged, and all these other things that I have uh, mentioned in here. Okay. And that's what I wanted to uh, show. So then it's up to you, Dietrich, to conclude that, if you uh, please. I'm curious how you handle tables. Sorry? Um, how, how do you handle tables? Very well. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, row height, breaking pages? No. So that's what I was going to continue with. In the current version of PDF chip, tables themselves are, are handled just fine. They use or support all of the features you have for CSS that exists. What is not explicitly not supported at the moment is something like a, a table that breaks across multiple pages where you want to have repeating headers and so on. But that is something I don't think it's in your no. overview, but it is something that is on the list I know for uh, an upcoming version of the product. And you have like keep settings with paragraphs, like keep them next? Everything that is supported in, uh, in CSS, so you can specify that you don't want a page break or you would prefer not to have page breaks and, okay. and those things. Yeah. But you can think of you can really think of it as WebKit on steroids. So everything, anything that works on WebKit is supported out of the box. And then things that are not supported by WebKit um, in either will be taken up by a PDF chip itself because it has support for it, like CMYK and Spot and so on or you'll have to find a solution using uh, a polyfill library, a JavaScript library that does that. Uh, and those are typically supported as well. Uh, in the examples that I have in the documentation, we use things like jQuery because it's easy, because you're running on a WebKit engine, and all of that is supported anyway, so it's quite easy. Uh, do you guys do interactive phone building? Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 No, form fields at the moment are not supported. So uh, if you want to generate something with form fields, at the moment you will not be able to do so. Uh, that, that means the uh, HTML text box will not be supported as well. Uh, correct. Uh, you, might get, uh, you might get something that looks the same, but you will that there is no conversion of form fields into Acrobat form fields, whatever the technology is, uh, or PDF form fields. That, that was your question, you know, whether it's possible to, to convert an HTML form field into a PDF form field, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm just trying to think through the workflow. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's somewhere on the list, but yeah. yeah. There's no data. Okay. Since Leonard is already shouting at us, you should approach. I didn't even say a thing. All I did was go like that. <laughs> <laughs> another five minutes. Don't be long enough. I was shouting, you know. <laughs> okay. No, 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 we need to get you moving because by the time you get there, we don't leave now, you don't start the next session on time. Okay. Um, so this is a... <laughs> <laughs>